And we're live guys, welcome to another episode of Good Morning Crypto, only here, only on Ivan on Tech. We are of course broadcasting live straight out of Stockholm, Sweden, and we do the show each and every day at 8am Central European Summertime. I come to you like an atomic clock each and every day. Today we have a very important topic and we're going to have a very juicy episode, content filled episode, because we're going to discuss Backed. Many of you guys have asked me about Backed and many of you guys I know are following Backed a lot and you know that Backed is this new platform for Bitcoin futures that is going to be launching on September the 23rd and that is next week. Let's see, is it Monday or Tuesday? It seems to be that it is Monday. So on Monday we're going to have a whole new futures platform for uh, for Bitcoin and the interesting thing with that platform is of course that it is being done by the Intercontinental Exchange, basically ICE, and those are the same guys who are behind the big exchanges in the US, big stock exchanges. So obviously, th these are some very serious players, and they are going to be physically settled. So we're going to discuss really what it means and why it's so important, and whether price will dump or pump, because many people think that it will dump. And I mean, everything is possible, but I think we also need to discuss where that fear is coming from. And just like Louis Thomas said in his video yesterday that we're suffering from PTSD guys we all everyone in crypto has post-traumatic stress syndrome right now when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, futures and new futures platforms because you realize that we completely collapsed the market last time just after the CME futures launched and we're going to talk about this situation more in depth in this video so this is going to be the first topic then I have so many other topics as well we're going to talk about Argentina and the humanitarian disaster that is potentially now going to escalate there because they're printing money like crazy. Argentina has not printed this much money in a very long time. In a few months, they will print 5% extra of the circulating supply of the Argentinian peso. This is something that we need to discuss because Huobi and Binance are both trying to establish themselves in Argentina. And obviously, it would be extremely good for the people there. And um, Huobi is is there already we're going to discuss that and then we will discuss overstock because the interesting news is that the overstock uh, ceo the previous ceo actually sold all of his shares to go all in crypto gold and silver so very very important news very juicy episode and as always as always i want to welcome everyone who is watching this live i see ruslan i see chris i see fabric king what's up what's up welcome i see julian crypto trader pramod Michael Gulp, everyone, extremely welcome to the show. As always, let me know where you're watching from, which country, which continent, which planet. Let me know in the chat. Smash the like, smash the bell, and let me know what you're drinking. Because, because we're drinking black coffee, no milk, and no sugar involved, as always. Now, the markets, what is going on? We do see a green day, which is amazing. Many people got really, really worried yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> when Bitcoin dropped below 10k and basically uh, many people were ready to go down to 8s and 7s and really dump a lot and many people said that hey it's gonna be like November where we were sideways at 6k for several months and then we completely collapsed to 3k and many people were discussing that now this is a similar situation but we have recovered now 3% up we're above 10k again we're still in this consolidation sideways movement nothing is really happening when it comes to Bitcoin we're still all waiting for the breakout either to the upside or to the downside so breakout should happen within the following weeks especially when you see this the volume is getting lower lower and lower and obviously everyone is just anticipating something to happen everyone is just anticipating bitcoin to either go to the moon or completely collapse and not many people have patience in this in this field right now and this is something by the way that mr christoph talked about in his video that i watched um, uh, yesterday he talked about the fact that too many people are anticipating big moves and big actions but nobody has patience and i, I thought this was so interesting because it is true that even liquidity dries out when you do see this sideways movements and you see here that liquidity really spiked in July and this was kind of when Bitcoin was going completely mad we went from 3k to 14k during June and all of this time here so obviously volu volume usually follows 
uh, f follows a price action and uh, this is definitely something to keep in mind right now we're very very low in volume and uh, this is of course CME futures but it is almost like spot uh, spot volumes so very very similar but nonetheless 3% up congratulations everyone ethereum 5% almost 6 and this is very important we're going to discuss ethereum in this video as well because We've had a very important uh, increase. I mean, we went uh, from 190-ish to almost uh, 220 on the, I mean, on the big scale, it's nothing. <laughs> I mean, just look at it. We're completely collapsed since the all-time high. But if you zoom in, it's been quite a good run from 180 on September the 3rd, all the way to 220. So a good increase. And I think a lot has to do with the DeFi space completely going exponential on Ethereum and also Ethereum 2.0 being very close at last. But now it is very close. It seems like at least we'll see if they delay. They always delay something. So not, not completely out of the picture that they will delay it. Then we have XRP 0.25. And uh, yeah, so quite still overall uh, in the top 10. ABBC coin, man, I don't even want to comment. I don't even want to to say anything again but yes it is once again the top pumper probably tomorrow will be the top dumper we'll see but yeah i don't want to talk more about <laughs> <laughs> more about quant 17 percent dragons coin 16 looking at the big losers uh by coin 4 but yeah uh hashtag a a abbc coin the top pumper of of, of the day and also, guys, you know that in these markets, you can make money in an upwards movement or a downwards movement. And until the beginning of October, really just a few days left in September, you can get $110 for free on Bybit. You can short, you can long, you can make money when the market goes down or up. And this is something very important. This wasn't possible just a few years ago. It wasn't as accessible as it is right now. You can do it with Bitcoin, Ethereum, EOS, XRP. You can leverage, you can do whatever you really want. So de definitely use the link below to get on Bybit. Now, guys, let's get into the most important topic of the day, which is, of course, backed. And by the way, Salvatore, Salvatore Gaglio, thank you so much for donation. Listen every day to get through my last hour of work. Nice man. Nice man. Amazing to hear. So why do we have PTSD? And why are we kind of hurt when it comes to futures? Why is it so that people are not that excited about backed as they were about uh, CME futures in 2017? Before you understand it, I want you to give some. I want to give you some historical perspective. So CME futures, which is not uh, physically settled, but it is still futures. It is still accessible to institutional investors, but they're not physically settled. And we will be discussing the significance of that uh, in this video as well. But you know that they launched on. December 17th, 2017. So basically, we, we had this uh, article from CNBC. This was uh, from 2017, December. And they talked about the fact that Bitcoin debuts on the world's largest future exchange and prices fall slightly. And uh, this is something that was very significant. Many people were looking at this. Many people were anticipating these futures. And obviously, the sentiment in the market at that time in 2017 was extremely bullish. We were going to the moon left and right. Altcoins had just 1000 X almost each and every altcoin you picked. Everyone was euphoric. And obviously, this wasn't really sustainable. People were talking about the fact that we are going to 100K, 30K, 40K, 50K. But uh, th th this, of course, didn't happen. And just after these futures got released, we started the collapse. The collapse really took place. So look at this. This is the historical snapshot of the coin market cap website on September the 17th, right when the futures launched. So we were at $19,000 for one Bitcoin. Really amazing times. I mean, th this really brings a lot of no nostalgia because look at Bitcoin was at 19,000. Ethereum at uh, 719. I mean, insane prices. Bitcoin cash at 1,800. These prices we have not seen in a very, very long time. Uh, Litecoin, 300 IOTA, $3. I mean, it's completely mind-blowing. <laughs> completely mind-blowing. But anyway, what happened just a one week later is this. You know, we went from 19 to 13 in just a week. So it, 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 the collapse really started here. And Ethereum went from uh, 719 to just 694 So not a big drop, but uh, it was just the beginning of the drop. Interestingly, interestingly, look at... Bitcoin Cash. Bitcoin Cash went, fr went from 1.8 to 2.9. <laughs> So we did see an insane pump in, in Bitcoin Cash. So anyway, 
this is a very important historical moment because obviously when futures got launched, we dropped in the markets, everyone, everyone started talking about the fact that it is futures that collapse the market, that through, through futures being launched, now these big whales and maybe even some institutions had new avenues to dump on the market. But uh, I don't think it really makes sense in many ways. Although we do see a correlation, yes, futures launched, market collapsed, it doesn't mean causation. So correlation and causation are two completely different things. I mean, the market collapsed because we were mooning for the entire 2017. And it is just natural that when we're, when we're entering such an exponential phase, sooner or later, we're going to see a decline and a very significant decline. So it was just natural. Then futures launched in December and the uh, could be some connection, but I think it is less likely that it is because of futures that the market collapsed. We had so many other reasons to collapse as well. Futures may, may be the last, the last reason that really was uh, was the deciding factor. But nonetheless, now that we see backed being discussed and backed launching on September twenty third. Many people are a bit worried. Many people think that we will see a similar situation as in 2017 with CME, that, hey, we are at these prices and then a week later we're going to go down to these prices. But of course, in, in our terms, in, in, in relation to our prices right now. And all in all, I think the first point I really want to make is what I just said about causation and correlation. Just because some, some events uh, happened on the same time doesn't mean that they are actually correlated. And the second most important thing I want to talk about is that I mean, this is big opportunity for Bitcoin. Back is extremely, extremely big opportunity because when a whale or when an institutional investor or some other wealth manager, whoever really, when they are buying CME futures and if they are exposing themselves to the Bitcoin markets through CME futures and they're taking a long position, no Bitcoin is actually uh, being bought. No Bitcoin is actually being traded. No, Bitcoin is actually being being exchanged and the switching hands. That doesn't happen in CME futures. Now, with backed, it is actually real Bitcoin that is being traded. Because if it is the case that we see a huge demand in backed futures, that institutional investors, that the wealth managers, that we do see a real demand in this product, then these guys really have to go out on the market and buy Bitcoin. They have to do it. And because this is settled in, in real Bitcoin, it is physically settled. While well, this is cash settled. So CME is cash settled, uh, backed is crypto settled. And this is a very important thing to realize that on September the 23rd, we we will see this opportunity for the first time for for big institutions to actually trade futures that are physically settled and as ccn writes that the most noteworthy fact is that bat backed will custody and deliver real bitcoin that means institutional inflows would reduce supply because obviously when when you buy these futures and when you're speculating in them the uh, backed platform will have to buy bitcoin from the market and thus maybe increase price soon maybe maybe not financial advice who really knows this is different from other regulated futures markets such as CME and CBOE, which only deal in cash settled futures. So this is it, guys. I think that it is a great opportunity for Bitcoin. Obviously, nobody knows whether we're going to go to the moon or collapse or whatever. But long term, looking at this from a high perspective and long term, this is positive for the market. And the more financial instruments we have, the better price discovery we have overall. The better and more efficient we have, uh, the, 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 more, the, the more of these instruments we have, the more efficient the market becomes and the better price discovery we get. So all in all, this is very good. And it also opens up more doors to future financial products such as ETFs. And obviously ETFs would open up even more exposure, even more exposure to institutional investors. And it is, especially important now with all the macro news that we've been discussing. You know that the biggest marketing department we have in crypto right now is actually the Fed. It is the Fed, ECB, central banks, and the governments. They are the biggest marketing department for Bitcoin. And many wealth managers and a lot of wealthy individuals as well, such as the CEO of uh, Overstock, as I also want to discuss with you, they are exiting the traditional financial markets, or at least trying to expose themselves more and more to gold and crypto. And obviously, they need easy avenues. The onboarding needs to be very, very quick and easy. And so, for example, 
You see Overstock CEO, and for all of you who don't know, Overstock is a publicly traded company. They have 1,800 employees. So their previous CEO basically sold his entire stake in the company for 90 million, and now he's basically all in gold, silver, and cryptocurrencies. So he published this letter that here's a message to my former colleagues at Overstock, and he revealed that he plans to stop trading anything else except the three assets that are counter cyclical to the economy. Me. And those are, of course, gold, silver, and two flavors of crypto. So, guys such as Patrick, they need an easy uh, on ramp. I mean, yes, they could go and try to get into dark pools like on Kraken, or they could try to go to some OTC desk, but those guys are. I mean, if you compare it to a regulated a regulated entity such as BAC, and then you compare all other OTC desks we have right now in crypto, it is completely two different animals. When it comes to legitimacy, when it comes to experience, when it comes to these guys, for example, Patrick, the former CEO of uh, Overstock, when it comes to trust, because at the end, it's all about trust. It's a lot about trust when you want to buy a lot of Bitcoin. It's a lot about trust when you want to uh, exchange a large amount of fiat for crypto. You're basically working with people who will handle a lot of money for you and will be this middleman. And many of the OTC desks, they launched in 2018, <laughs> they launched in 2017. There are just some guys who thought that, hey, maybe it's a great idea. And it is a great, a great business idea, of course, to launch an OTC desk, but at the same time, I think the standards for many people needs to be higher. And that is why BACT is once again important. Uh, and I think it's, it's also interesting from a macroeconomic perspective, because I mean, th this guy is really worried about the deep state. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a bit interesting as well, that in the blog post, the former CEO of Overstock also said that, you know, he wants to trade gold and silver because they are stored outside of the US. While it will be safe for him to have assets stored in Switzerland and some other locations that are out of reach of the deep state. So, uh, I don't know, I think it's interesting because, you know, this notion of deep state, this is not something that CEOs of publicly traded companies were talking about just a few years ago, just two years ago, or or or, or three years ago. Uh, but now it is, some things that have really been this conspiracy theory are becoming more and more normal. So, uh, it's an another aspect of this whole story, and I think you know, when people are discussing the financial collapse, that the Fed uh, policies are unsustainable, that the Fed is doing all kinds of crazy things, this was also something that only, you know, some conspiracy theorists talked about. The, I mean, it's, it was it was not something that was seriously discussed, the fact that the Fed can actually destroy the financial system and so on and so forth. So I think it's just another interesting thread to follow, that some things that seem uh, silly and seem that something is just, uh, that some topics are just being discussed by conspiracy theorists on the internet, you know, suddenly they become quite widely discussed as well. Uh, all in all, this is very, very important times we're living in. And as Mr. Christoph said in his YouTube channel, we need to have patience, but we also need to realize that these are some extraordinary events. And BACT is such an event. And whether it's gonna pump or dump, I mean, who really knows? Long term, I think it is definitely bullish. Long term, it is absolutely bullish. Short term, anyone's guess. And let me know if you agree or disagree. Let me know if you think that this is significant or not significant. And let me know if you think that uh, back futures are going to have positive or negative effect, whatever you think. Let me know in the chat and in the comment section. Now, I want to discuss the situation in Argentina a bit, because Argentina is not doing that well. So, Argentina's central bank wants to increase the supply of peso by 5%. And while 5% might not sound like a lot, it is in two months that they plan to increase it by 5%. So I think the time scale is very important. And although 5% might sound like, well, it's uh, it, it's not that much, it is a lot. I mean, it's a, it is a huge amount, especially in two months. If you just extrapolate it over a year, you realize we're talking about uh, tens of percents that the, that the inflation is hitting the population. And this is a human tragedy, a potential human tragedy like in Venezuela that we might potentially be witnessing in Argentina right now. Now. And I think it's interesting because they say that it is to ensure monetary and financial stability. But obviously, when you do pump 5% of your supply in two months, it, I mean, it's uh, nowhere near financial stability or monetary stability. So all in all, I think it is so important for Argentinians to be able to enter into crypto. And that is why I think it's so good that Huobi plans to expand to Argentina and they 
plan to uh, launch this fiat to crypto gateway and it seems that they are already established in um, uh, in Argentina and uh, the next step is to la uh, launch fiat to crypto gateway you know that Binance also plans to go there and seems that Huobi is a bit ahead of Binance but it is very good that both of them are exploring the market and all in all this is so important for the local population to have different on-wraps to crypto to have different ways to take their fiat and put into hard money such as Bitcoin so basically Carlos Banfi CEO of of Hobby in Argentina, Argentina is saying that Argentina is South America's most promising market for blockchain development. There already exists a general consensus to break from a reliance on local currency and banks. And with Hobby's interest into the market, it is a great opportunity to move the needle on blockchain and crypto adoption in Argentina. 100% correct. 100% correct. And also, I think it signifies and highlights a very important trend that we're seeing right now when it comes to exchanges. And exchanges are really, really working hard to localize. It's all about having a website in the native language of the population. It's all about having the authentication methods that are present in that country. So, for example, if you want to establish yourself in Sweden, you better use an app called Bank ID. So, Bank ID is the authentication method that everyone in Sweden uses in order to access online banking, in, in order to access all kinds of different things. Like if you want to log into your tax account through internet, you do that through Bank ID. And obviously, new exchanges that want to establish themselves in Sweden, they better use Bank ID because if they don't, it just doesn't look serious. Any financial application that is not using Bank ID and they're trying to serve Swedish customers, it just doesn't look like a serious uh, enterprise. And so it is a very important trend because th these kinds of uh, things are different in different countries. In Sweden, you have Bank ID. In Argentina, you might be having something else. In Norway, you have something else. And therefore, exchanges need to localize both languages wise they need to have local support so that when somebody calls in they get support in their own language and i think now they're finally realizing it because only hardcore crypto enthusiasts will use an exchange that is based who knows where maybe in seychelles maybe somewhere else and don't have any support very difficult to reach might take two months for the support to answer it is only in english i mean many people don't know english in this world as well so you realize how small of a an audience we really are if we really want to go global and if we really want to have worldwide adoption we need to be localized and exchanges need to be working hard to launch their products in those local markets and really think hard how can we make it look so that when an Argentinian person uses Hobby, he thinks that it is an Argentinian company. I think that should always be the goal. Let's say Binance. If Binance is to launch in the US or in Germany or in Japan, if a Japanese person uses Hobby or Binance, they should think that, hey, it is a Japanese company because they have localized so well. They have made their business look like a, you know, 100% Japanese company, not some kind of, you know, Chinese or whatever. 100% Jap Japanese. And it should be like that in all country so i think it is a very important trend i saw a donation what is happening tell my brother chris he should buy bitcoin uh yeah i'm not sure who you mean i i know a few chris's but thanks bro thanks bro thanks bro okay guys what is happening in the chat because this is basically all the news i have one more news about warren buffett he's always eating ice cream and eat and drinking coca-cola <laughs> pumping his bags but uh, an important thing is that um uh, he uh, basically this article says how small Bitcoin really is still. So Berkshire Hathaway have a 122 billion cash pile right now just sitting in their bank accounts. And that's about two thirds of Bitcoin's current market capitalization of 177 billion. So I think it's quite interesting. And I think it's also why regulators still do not really care a lot about Bitcoin. And we discussed it with box mining that stable coins right now are way more challenging and way more dangerous to the status quo than Bitcoin. Because stable coins are getting crazy adoption in parts of the world, world such as China, Asia, Latin America, uh, while Bitcoin is being a bit tougher to, to adopt because people want first and foremost international frictionless and fast transactions and they want to store their value in, in US dollars. So that is why even when, when the uh, hobby, for example, launches in, uh, in Argentina, my guess would be that while, you know, while I would 
wish and while I really hope that people buy Bitcoin, I think there is a good case that people will buy Tether or other uh, dollar stable coins. Because in Argentina, it's not like you many people understand Bitcoin, but many people understand the value of having your your money in dollars. So it could be the fact that they just rush into stable coins. And because Bitcoin is still so small, like this is just an example, it means that we're very early on. I mean, we're very, very early adopters. But at the same time, I think it is also why regulators are focusing way more on stable coins right now. Going to get a new haircut today. Ivan, what is your haircut called? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I just go in and I say machine here in on the side, machine on the back. And then you need to do have this uh, these scissors that make the hair a bit uh, uh, not that tight, like not that dense. Uh, they, they need to de-densify the hair. So the, the, this haircut is called machine on left, machine on right, machine on the back, and then de densify on top basically this is how i explained it and mostly people understand it mostly people understand it no such thing as a stable coin right so this is the the confusion many people have they think that the value is stable but it is stable to fiat fiat goes down your value also goes down in stable coin sounds like a robot barber <laughs> Ivan gaining weight. I'm I'm gaining it's all in bicep in bicep terms. I'm I'm gaining weight in bicep and tricep terms. That is absolutely right. Uh go watch Jeremy Rifkin, the Zero Marginal Co Cost Society. The third nice. Zero marginal cost cost marginal cost society. I will check it out. Thanks, bro. Thanks, bro. Uh, what else? I have the feeling a big, big storm is coming, but we don't know how heavy it will be. Absolutely. Uh, and it could be in either direction, by the way. Hopefully, it will be in upwards direction. Because we are, theoretically, we should be in a bull market. And I do think we are in a bull market. So, no financial advice, but theoretically, according to me, there is a, there is a higher chance that the breakout will be upwards. Ivan, should I learn Java to become a blockchain programmer or do you suggest another language to start becoming a blockchain developer? So you should go to spooky.ivanontech.com because we have our Halloween deal and we teach you everything from scratch. You can enroll for only $10 and we have increased the price. So, you know, yesterday it was just $1, but now it is 10. We need to update here. But anyway, we teach you everything from scratch. So you really need to go here and you need to enroll. And the way we will be teaching you is through this course, so smart contract programming. And here we teach you JavaScript from scratch. And then when you're finished with JavaScript, you can either go to Solidity Programming and learn how to program uh, Ethereum smart contracts, or you can go to C++ programming, and then you can learn how to do EOS development. So there are two, two options you have. But I recommend JavaScript because it is very like uh, uh, Solidity, and it is easy to start. And JavaScript is a fun language to learn because you can quickly you can quickly build, uh, you know, applications on the web. You can show people what you're building. So it's a fun language to start learning. But it doesn't really matter. You can learn Java too. Absolutely, you can learn Java, but it's not as fun learning. Uh, I, and I, I am saying this because I have experience in teaching both JavaScript and uh, Java. And in Java, it is like you need to, it's very difficult to show something fancy to your friend. In JavaScript, it's so easy. You can easily build like a website and it has pop-ups and you can change color on the text with JavaScript. And so people get just more excited with JavaScript. So I think it is a good start. And then you can learn Solidity or you can learn EOS. But don't think too much about the language. That is maybe my most frustrating thing in the world. People, this, you know, they spend months deciding which language to learn, but in reality, it doesn't matter. Just learn something. Just learn something. So, yeah. Uh, is it $10? It's $10 first month, and then it is $50. So, you, you see here, $10 first month, and then $49. Uh, so this is really just a trial. We want you to try it. So that is why we do have these uh, discounts. So definitely check it out. The greedy buyers prevented the big money to get in by pumping. <laughs> I mean, that's one way of looking at it. Uh, hello, everyone. Need to see the recording. Had to go. Okay, good luck. Good luck on the meeting, Kent. Uh, please comment progress of resistance decks. Uh, I really don't have any comment because we're not working with them since... Uh, 
like a few months back, since May, or uh, since May. But we advised them on the tech uh, when they were developing, and then when the tech was done, they did not prolong our co uh, contract uh, for advising, so I'm not really following them anymore. But I think, th I mean, they do have very interesting tech. Uh, if you just uh, Google resistance, I will take, I explain, I have like a video series explaining. And uh, the reason we made the video series is because we were, we were part of building it. So definitely check it out. But for like the latest, latest news, but better to uh, check with the team. Ivan, my brother hasn't bought BTC yet. He's watching. In a minute or less, how would you convince him to buy and hodl? Bit finesse. Uh, I, I don't know if he needs convincing, really. He just needs education. So let him watch until he is convinced himself. Let, let him watch until he understands how uh, how the financial system works and why it's important to have a hedge. Why it's important to have a hedge and what is true real value. Uh, I don't think you can just say like a magic word and he's 100% he's convinced. It's a, it's a longer education. And before he's educated, I don't think he should touch Bitcoin. But uh, I, I think it's just a natural, natural conclusion you reach once you understand that in reality, look at Argentina. I mean, if you look, if you live in Argentina and you read this, your your peso is being inflated by five percent in two months. Maybe then you understand the value of Bitcoin. And mo most people in Argentina still don't get it. I mean, they don't know what Bitcoin is. Most people in Argentina have no clue. So this is the lack of education I'm talking about. And now they, unfortunately, they will have to deal with the consequences of not being educated. And uh, this is so. I mean, so unfortunate. It's so unfortunate. So I think it's just education. And I mean, really, I'm never trying to convince anyone it's not like i'm trying to convince my friends or people on the street uh, i'm just trying to spread education they make their own decisions because the issue with convincing is that you convince them the market drops and now they're sad and angry i mean that is maybe the last thing i want to do <laughs> so I, i'm never convincing anyone but through education my hope is that they will reach their own conclusions okay more uh, thanks for the nation by the way i need to talk to you about scaling solution from the original proof of weak hands uh, uh okay so yeah, just write in the chat, man. Uh, just write in the chat. I'm not very interested in this whole proof of weak hands thing, but uh, you can write in the chat. Thanks for the nation. Thanks for the nation. Great episode. I learned so much as usual. It's crazy to look at the price history. We always seem to be in the beginning of cryptocurrency, no matter how much time goes by. Yes, 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 yes. Enjoy, enjoy the weekend. Enjoy the weekend, Howard. Enjoy the weekend. Can't convince people, you need to convince yourself. Uh, yeah. Let him watch the first hidden <coughs> uh, secrets of money. Uh, yeah, see, this is good. This is good. This is was actually a good tip. Go to Mike Maloney and, and watch all of the videos. It really can take him like a day or two, maybe three, maybe more. Uh, but uh, let's see. Let me find it. Uh, yeah, so just watch all of these episodes. I think this is great education. Uh, absolutely fantastic education. This is good morning finance for last two months. Well, this is kind of the thing with crypto. It is finance. It is crypto finance. Absolutely. And uh, it is just a natural part of crypto. It is both tech, it's technology, it is finance, it is uh, regulation, it is so society, it is all kinds of things. That is why it's so exciting. And uh, therefore, it, this is, by the way, why we do see so many different people from so many different areas and industries joining us. So th that is why it is so significant. Uh, what do you think about how do upcoming partnership with Huawei? I haven't followed how do too much, but I do know that uh, there is this Huawei thing. I actually spoke to the Martini guy, that Martini guy. He loves how do. So he was very excited, but we'll see. It's, it's kind of like Engine. So Engine had with uh, Samsung that um, r when you buy a Samsung phone in Korea, you have Engine wallet pre-installed. A similar thing will be with Huawei. But I think... The most important question everyone needs to ask is how many people are using those pre-installed apps? To be honest with you, that is why I went... Well, the good thing with iPhone is that it never happens. You don't get that pre-installed garbage. You get a few Apple apps, but mostly they are useful. But when you buy an Android, man, you get so much crap, so many pre-installed things. And while Engine Wallet is amazing, I think it's very good, it's just that in people's eyes, all of these pre-installed apps are just garbage. So I think we just need to not only be thinking about the partnership and how amazing it is and how easy it is for people to access that application on their new phones, which is true, and it is amazing. At the same time, 
people just treat it as some, you know, you just put it in a folder, in a, you put all of these apps in, in your in your screen, in your, uh, you create a folder, basically all pre-installed crap, and that's it. And because in many, in many cases, you cannot even uninstall them, which is very frustrating. Uh, I've got you watching both Chris and Martin. So Martin guy, I watched for a long time. I mean, it's it was uh, uh, even before, but Chris, yeah, I, I think you told me about Chris, Michael. Yes, yes, yes. Ray Dalio, how economic machine work. Uh, check that out as well. Now you de-densify, but in about 30 years, you'll be doing the opposite. Exactly. I'm actually, I, I've been thinking about this as well. Right now, my issue is my hair is so dense. It's uh, really mind-blowing. It becomes extremely dense very quickly. And uh, when it becomes so dense, it's very difficult to style. It's very difficult to do anything with it. So I always come into the barbershop. I say, machine here, machine there, machine here, de-densify here. In the future, that strategy may need to change. Just like you're, ad you're adjusting your trading strategies to the market and to the current environment in the markets, it's important to adjust your hair strategy to the environment as well. So with age, we're going to see another environment with the boldness. So yes, <laughs> I think it's going to be uh, interesting. Uh, uh, Ivan, what is your engine? Oh man, I need to pull it up. Uh, but I, I do have their wallet, but uh, I, I cannot just copy paste it for you. Uh, <clears throat> we did this uh, stream with Vitek. I remember Vitek gave me the uh, the first collectible, and we set up the wallet together with Vitek. But to be honest, I haven't been using it a lot. That's the thing. I haven't been using it a lot. That Martini guy is dope. Yes, 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 sir. I shave my head. Proof of scalp. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> Wait for the announcement of the first coin to reverse fork back to Bitcoin. Interesting, interesting. A reverse fork. Why Why would you do that? Uh, maybe there is a point. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for once again making this stream so much better. Enjoy your weekend. Enjoy your Friday. Hope you really have a great time. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hair stop loss essential. Yes, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Otherwise, you will be de-densifying too much. You gotta put a stop loss right there when it's when it's perfectly fine. I'll see you all guys on Monday. Have a great day. Enjoy your day and goodbye, guys. Goodbye, 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 goodbye.